Hello everyone! Welcome back to The Mudroom, our weekly free and live Uncommon Sense Parenting class. I say weekly, but we skipped the last two weeks while I took a wee vacay, and it was amazing. I can't thank you all enough for both supporting me and taking a break, and giving me something that I needed a break from. <laughs> Without y'all, I wouldn't have been able to take this break and reconnect with two of my best girlfriends, get a fresh injection of vitamin D, which was very sorely needed at this point in the winter, and just in general, clear my head. I filled an entire notebook with ideas I read. It was like my brain was finally able to focus and connect dots that I couldn't while I was so distracted with, you know, the daily grind of owning a business, being a mom and working with clients. It really just reinforced for me how important breaks are. So thank you for facilitating that. I'm super excited to get back to it though and start figuring out where all those great ideas fit into Uncommon Sense Parenting and start working with y'all again. I missed you. I missed my clients, even though I was still checking in with them every single day. So while I'm not super hot on being back in the gloom and cold of a Canadian winter, I am thrilled to be back in my routine. So tonight we're going to be chatting about something that has been a big issue for me and anyone who is currently living in the province of Ontario like I do, and that's how to survive unexpected home days with your kids. Before we jump into that though, allow me to introduce myself for those of you who are new around here. My name is Alana Robinson and I am a parenting effectiveness coach. I work with parents of toddlers, preschoolers, and kindergartners to help them understand why their children are misbehaving and how to fix it without yelling, shaming, or coercing them. I'm the host here on The Mudroom. I also host my free peer support Facebook group, The Parenting Posse. If you aren't a member, you should totally join. And I host my Done With You Behavior Modification Program, Parentability, where we work together to change the behavior your kids are exhibiting that is driving you batshit crazy. If you're here, say hi. I love chatting with y'all. If you're watching the replay, drop me a replay in the comments. If commenting just feels like too big of a commitment, just do me a favor and like the video if you find it helpful. All right, so surviving unexpected home days. As I said, this is something that has been up in my face personally recently because we've had a lot of rotating teacher strikes where I live. And while I'll refrain from going on a political rant, I will say hashtag no cuts to education. I support the teachers 100%. I'm not bitching about this. <laughs> it's just, it's been a thing. And my oldest has been home a lot more than usual for the last month or so. And whether you're semi-local semi, semi local to me or not, everybody has those unexpected days where daycare closes or, you know, there's a snow day or there's no power. Even just weekends, which aren't unexpected, but I know a lot of parents still have difficulty with. Shit happens. Life is complicated, and sometimes the best laid plans don't exactly work out, especially if you generally have a pretty tight routine. So these are my top four tips for unexpected home days and getting through them as unscathed as possible. So first, create some kind of structure. You know, you don't have to still get the kids up at 7 a.m., when you get a bus cancellation notification just so that you're consistent. We've talked about the difference between routines and schedules before. Kids have lots of days where, you know, the schedule just has to go out the door. What you want to have in your back pocket for these kinds of days though is an expected routine. In my family, that's, you know, we get out of bed, everybody uses the washroom, we have breakfast, the kids go play while I work, we have lunch, the kids go play while I work, and then dad gets home and we have dinner and continue with our evening. That routine is really consistent. Either of those play times can get swapped out for a structured activity or errands or, you know, outings or what have you if needed, but 
that's the general flow of our day and my kids know it. It's the same routine we use on weekends, only I might not be working on weekends, we might be doing yard work or working on hobbies or laundry, but that general routine to the day is there and my kids can follow it pretty independently. Which brings me to tip number two, which is give your kids independence. Get out of their grill. I know that teaching children to pay, play independently takes time. It's not just as easy as saying, go play. It would be lovely if that was the case, but it just isn't. But on weekends and on these home days is an ideal time to start working towards that. Get your children used to not being entertained. I have had several parents complain about how busy museums and indoor playgrounds and other kid-friendly, quote-unquote, public spaces are on things like strike days and snow days. And it just kind of blows my mind because I would never take my kids into public on days like that because of course it's going to be a zoo and that's going to stress everyone out. So don't. It's okay. They don't need to be entertained all the time. Start working towards that independent play on these days so that you can get to the point of saying, go play, and they will. And we've talked about how important independent play is before, so you can go find that back episode on my blog. Our children do not need us to be in their face all the time. And the fact that they're missing a day of school or daycare or preschool or whatever doesn't mean that you have to recreate that environment at home. It also really facilitates your ability to stay in your routine because if your kids are playing by themselves, then you can take that telemeeting that you were supposed to have as a face-to-face -face meeting. You can call into the office. You can get some work done while occasionally throwing snacks in their direction, which means you may not actually have to take that day off of work. Independent play is really important. It builds brains, it makes our kids smarter, and it gives you a whole other level of freedom because you aren't running around trying to magic up a litany of activities to distract them with. And those two things kind of go hand in hand. The routine facilitates the independent play and the independent play facilitates the routine. Which brings me to tip number three. Send them outside if it is safe to do so. Here in Canada, a major cause of unexpected home days is the proliferation, my mouth doesn't want to say that word today, proliferation of snow that we receive. <laughs> but the thing is that it actually has to be somewhat mild for it to snow. Snow days are not typically extremely cold days. So bundle them up set a timer for two hours, and send them out. Now, obviously you can't do this if the cause of the home day is an extreme cold warning, which is probably the second most frequent reason that we get snow days in Canada, or in extreme heat. Does that happen? I've never lived somewhere where that's really a problem. Usually when it's really hot here in Canada, school's out. Do y'all get buses canceled for extreme heat? I don't know if that's a thing. Somebody who is from a warm climate chime in here and let me know. <laughs> um, that would make sense to me, but maybe it's not. Um, but you get the gist. If it's safe, send them out. Use a visual timer. You all know how much I adore my visual timers. I generally stick mine in the window. I'll set it and just hang it up in the window. And usually I'll turn the alarm off on it because the reason most kids have difficulty playing outside is just that they need time to get into their play. Once they're in it, they'll stay there for a long time. So using the visual timer helps to free up their brain because it's not preoccupied with monitoring you. Excuse me. They can see how much longer that they have to stay outside. And usually once they're in their play, if nothing interrupts them, you can get three, sometimes four hours out of them, which is why I turn the alarm off. <laughs> I am happy to let them just keep going and I'm happy to let them in if they notice that the time has run out, but I don't want to alert them to the fact that the time has run out. And again, it fits with the other two. 
if you have an expected time to go outside and play and your kids are accustomed to playing independently and they're playing outside, then it frees you up. Work, clean, have a hot cup of coffee. The stress of unexpected home days usually comes from feeling like you have to be on and engaged and that you have to whip up a plan at the last second. And your kids will generally come in from being outside much calmer because the outdoors is a perfectly balanced sensory environment. So they'll usually exert themselves quite a bit more than they would inside, which means that the time after they come back in is usually much more relaxed. And uh, my final tip, <laughs> tip number four, if you must do some activities or your kids are really just at loose ends, make sure that you keep some basic supplies in your house for activities that don't require much supervision and are time consuming and only pull those activities out on these days. My personal favorite one is painting in the bathtub. It's awesome. It's like a triple whammy. I stick both my kids in our standing shower or our tub. I give them each a bunch of temper paint. I keep those like big like preschool jug sized temper paints in our utility closet just in primary colors. And I give them some brushes and I tell them to go ham. Strip them naked, go ham. And sometimes I'll throw some music on, which is really interesting to see because their art usually reflects the emotion of the music. It's a great emotional control activity. And they can generally do that for like an hour to an hour and a half. And once they're done, then I give them soap and sponges and they clean the tub for me. <laughs> and then I wash them. So as I said, triple whammy, I get some quiet time, I get happy kids, I get clean kids, and I get a clean bathtub. <laughs> it's all together. Um, and since all it requires is some temper paint, I just make sure that we always have temper paint in the house. I actually got my youngest these temper paint sticks for Christmas. They're like chunky paint markers. But that really kicked it up a notch because they can kind of draw with them, which keeps them in it for longer because their drawings have more shape to them. Um, washing toys in the sink is another one my kids really like. I'll give them a bin of dirty toys and set them up at the kitchen sink, which is not something I usually allow them to do. And I'll fill it like half full with soapy water and I'll give them some scrubbies and they will happily wash toys for eons. Lego. Now that my kids are into Lego, they will happily play Lego forever if I give them some inspiration like, hey, why don't you build a construction site? Or hey, I think Batman really needs a new Batcave. Every family and child is different, but what those thing, know what those things are ahead of time, right? So that you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off, and when you need them, you've got them. And then when you end up in an overcrowded indoor playground that is infested with plague during the flu season, you have something at home <laughs> that you can just relax and do. And again, freeze you up. So long story short, teach your kids to play independently during routine times during the day. And these unexpected days won't feel quite so stressful and overwhelming. If you want a refresher on how to teach your kids to play independently, there are several posts on my blog, which you can find by going to alanarobinson.com slash blog and typing in independent play into the search bar and all of those will come up. Okay, that's it for this evening. I hope that that reduced some of the anxiety I've been witnessing around and all about feeling the need to be on and plan these unexpected days where you have to work around your kids. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can always drop them in the comments. I do come back and check them. You can email me. My email address is help at alanarobinson.com. Super easy. Or you can post in the parenting posse and either I or one of my amazing mods or some of our really knowledgeable members will give you a helping hand. 
So that's it. Thanks you so much for being here with me today. I will see you next week for another Uncommon Sense Parenting class. Bye.